It's the Weather Extreme video. This is for Wednesday morning, the 24th of October. I'm James Spann, uh, getting set for a big change. A very cool weather for the weekend, strong winds. Uh, maybe a huge impact storm for the Northeast United States next week. A lot to talk about, so let's do it. Skycam shots early this morning at 5 a.m. Here's a look at downtown Clanton in Chilton County. Sky is clear. Temperatures are in the 50s. There's a Fayette County courthouse and downtown Birmingham. Ooh, look at the cold trough in the northeast. That's pulling down some brisk air. Coldest of the season so far, but we've got ridging here. That means another relatively warm day with highs in the upper 70s in most locations each day for the rest of this week. But yeah, you can see that cold air coming. We've got teens over Montana, and that'll uh, overspread much of the United States in coming days, and we will feel it this weekend. In advance of the front, chance of severe weather later today from near Omaha, Nebraska, up to uh, Des Moines, up into parts of Michigan, the UP of Michigan. And then uh, tomorrow, just low in 5% severe weather probabilities for Chicago, Milwaukee, St. Louis. And beyond that, we do not expect any severe weather and certainly nothing down here. In fact, really hardly any rain with this front Friday night when it comes in. This is showing barely enough to measure. Any rain amounts should be very light, very spotty. And the weekend should be mostly dry, but again, sharply cooler. There's our tropical pair. This will be the last of the season, I think. Uh, Sandy and Tony. Tony is of uh, no concern. That's moving out. No threat to land. Sandy will be the talk of the town, though. This is going to get all the pub. Uh, it's just under hurricane strength this morning. Top winds are at 70 miles an hour. You can see it's just south of Jamaica. And uh, this thing should be uh, coming right across Jamaica later today. A hurricane warning in effect there. Comes out across uh, eastern Cuba, up to the Bahamas. And then over the weekend, it makes the transformation to a cold core nor'easter type storm. And it could spell a whole bunch of trouble for the northeast United States. Uh, this is a look at the tropical modeling on Sandy. Pretty good agreement. Most of them agree with the NHC track. It bends it to the northeast. But again, it slows down out there. And there's a decent chance a strong high north of that will turn it back. And look at the ensembles. Like, uh, INSEP ensemble guidance, 20 members here. And, and now a large majority of those 20 members take it back to the United States, the upper Atlantic coast. Yeah, you still got a few outliers that take it to Portugal, but uh, uh, increasingly the confidence is higher. This will be a big problem for the northeast United States and a very high-impact storm. Let's take a look at global modeling here, and we'll go through this on a chronological basis. This is the GFS the global forecast system, the OZ run, valid at 1 o'clock this afternoon, ridging here, troughing in the northwest. And again, just a beautiful day. Highs in the upper 70s. The sky will be sunny. Cold front moving out across the high plains. Tomorrow, uh, deep surface low is uh, on the U.S.-Canadian border around the Great Lakes. Strong cold front extending south from that down towards St. Louis and uh, Tulsa. But again, we're in great shape tomorrow. Sunny, the high probably close to 80 and then we've got uh, Sandy coming up through the Bahamas. Friday, boy, it's going to be a windy day for Miami and Fort Lauderdale. Look how close that is to Florida down there. And then to the northwest, we got our cold front uh, that is approaching. And we'll mention a chance of isolated showers Friday afternoon, Friday night, but with hardly any moisture, no big deal. This is Friday night just after midnight, front around Memphis. We're dry, and then Saturday at midday, showers on the front north of here. But notice the strong gradient developing with high pressure to the northwest and sandy to the east. Uh, that should be a very windy day. We're expecting north winds averaging 15 to 25, gusting higher in, at times. Highs only in the low to mid-60s, and that wind's going to make it feel colder. A mixture of clouds and sunshine, but dry, so no rain for the college football games, but you need a good warm jacket. And again, that wind's going to be fierce, and that wind will continue Saturday night for the Alabama and the Auburn games. And I think for those games, temperatures will probably reach the 40s by the second half, and you factor in that wind, it's going to be brisk. And then Sunday, again, very windy, sunny, cool, highs, low 60s at best. North Alabama could stay in the 50s all day. And uh, Sandy is lurking off the East Coast. 
We'll go to Monday. The GFS begins to move it to the east. We're still windy and cold. And uh, there's Tuesday. The, the GFS has got the center, the course center, pretty far offshore, but a chunk of that breaks away. And look at Wednesday. It's got a, a, a chunk of that coming right into New Jersey and Long Island. So now the operational GFS kind of agrees with the Canadian and the European and that, hey, we've got a problem for the upper Atlantic coast the middle of next week. Uh, this solution obviously is not as strong as some of the other ones we've seen. All right, let's look at the European. This is uh, Monday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and that, that is just phenomenal. The 934 millibar nor'easter that's just off the coast of New Jersey, south of Long Island. I mean, uh, uh, just imagine what's happening, you know, above that, over you know, coast of New England, Cape Cod, just the driving onshore flow, coastal flooding, extreme winds, power outages. It, it, this that's just a mess. And then uh, Tuesday evening, it is inland, with the pressure rising over uh, uh, around Philadelphia. And remember, you got Arctic air in place, you know, on, on the other on the other side of the mountains. So again, if this is right, they'll be measuring snow over there in terms of feet and not inches. Whoo, boy! All right, we'll check the Canadian, and uh, it is pretty similar. This is valid Tuesday um, evening. I'm sorry, I take that back. This is Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wednesday morning. Uh, it's got a 974 millibar low that's around Long Island. And so, there again, there's very good agreement here. And really, all the global models now, the GFS is getting on board with this. So the idea of a high-impact storm for the Northeast United States, a very good possibility early next week. Will it be a perfect storm, you know, with potential for incredible issues? It's, it's possible, but we just don't know that yet. We can't be specific in the details, but... Again, widespread power outages. This thing will affect millions. There could be flooding, coastal flooding, beach erosion, and massive snows west of the mountains. So fair warning if you're up there. Uh, and there's the, and again, I just thought I'd show you the pressure field. That, that, you look at the high that's over the North Atlantic, you know, southern tip of Greenland. Come on, it, it's got to drive it in there. And this is the European if that pressure field is right. We'll check the end of the forecast. This is the 9th of November. As we get closer to Thanksgiving, man, the times are flying. Got a uh, a zonal flow, and if that's right, uh, no excessively cold air, but the consistency's not been good out there. We've seen all kind of solutions. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog next video here by 4 o'clock or so today. And don't forget to watch us on ABC 3340 News at 4, 5, 6, and 10 on the live stream or the television side. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and God bless.